You know, in that last video, we covered how this truck runs with and without the baffle. This is a 2014 2500 Ram with the Cummins engine, everything stock. We took the baffle out, we ran four runs, wide open in fourth gear, on up to maximum boost plus some. Like I said, we ended up going 87 miles an hour on one run. <laughs> This truck really performs in fourth gear, I tell you. It's surprising how quick it gets up there. It was like 10 seconds. But uh, we didn't really talk about the foam that much. Now, we know the foam by itself is there for noise. But the question now is, does the foam provide any type of uh, benefit as far as performance? So let's look at some charts, just a couple. And before, but before we look at the results, let me just show you how I capture this data so that you have an idea of how I come up with these numbers. This is a spreadsheet, and I dumped the data from a little SD card that I capture it in in my truck. It's from a bank's i dash data monster, and as you can see right here, it starts the time interval. In this particular run, I took 10 samples per second. And this was, this was a little trip I made a couple of days ago. It's 45 minutes worth of data. And if you go down to the end, you can see there's 27,000 data points. So there, there's a lot of opportunity for, for really analyzing various functions of the truck here in detail. And, uh, you know, you can record up to 100 parameters. I think I'm recording 75 here. And uh, so that's the method that we use. In the case of the charts we're going to look at, we're going to look at two runs, 70 and, and 85 miles an hour. And we're going to analyze whether or not that foam's having any effect on that engine performance, that turbo performance. So let's go ahead and get into it now. In the last video, we talked about the baffle in that resonator assembly or baffle assembly between the air cleaner and the turbocharger. And we concluded that we need to keep that baffle in there even if we take the foam off. And the concern is that the foam deteriorates over time and gets sucked into the turbocharger and therefore into the engine. But we really didn't look at what the foam does as far as the efficiency of the turbocharger, or does it do anything? We know the foam silences the turbocharger. That's obvious. Just take it off and ride for a few minutes, and you'll definitely be able to tell that. But I wanted to look at the efficiency without the foam and with the foam. Now, the other day I stopped my truck, I lift, lifted the hood, and I took my laser temperature and shot it on the side of that baffle resonator and I was reading 154 degrees. Now that's just sitting there idling. I don't know as you're running down the highway if you're getting any less temperature there or not. But I thought, well, maybe that foam is providing some sort of a uh, insulator. So I'd better look at temperature as well as airflow before we can make a conclusion come to a conclusion as to whether that thing is affecting the efficiency of the turbocharger. So I did look at temperature, and that's why I've got it on this chart here. If you look at the ambient temperature, and this is two different runs, and I think it was on two different days, so we got about a degree difference, about a degree and a half difference, right, on the 79.2 versus 80.6. Now, but it doesn't really matter because, and by the way, the green is with the foam and the brown is without the foam on both charts. But you can see here, with the foam, we were boosting. We are doing 70 miles an hour, 70.28 on one run and 70.62 on the other. So we got a little bit of, a little bit of an advantage on the, uh, on the run, the brown run, with, without the uh, foam. But uh, you can see we were boosting about the same, 2.5 versus 2.7, a little bit more here. But as I said, we were turning a few more RPM, so that would easily account for it. 
Same over here on the uh, CFM cubic feet per minute. Virtually, you know, identical with within any margin of error there. It's real close. So I'm in my mind, there's no difference in the airflow as far as with the foam or without the foam. And if you look at the difference, the differential between the ambient air temperature going into the intake and the air coming out of the intercooler, we've got about a 10 degree increase in air temperature. So on both runs, a little bit warmer on the run without the foam, but we're also boosting a little more. Basically, no change. So we're looking at the same identical gauges here on the uh, 85 mile per hour run. And I normally don't break the law like that at 85 miles an hour, but I did that the day we were doing the full throttle boost test and I figured, well, while I'm breaking the law, I might as well really break it. And so I did the 85 mile an hour. Now all the, these runs are not acceleration runs. These are just straight on 70 miles an hour and 85 miles an hour constant with the cruise control on. So, uh, and that's how we're looking at this. And the reason I wanted to do a high speed, say like 85, is because I wanted to get as much boost as I could without, you know, doing the full throttle because we've already done that. But the, the same basic information here on this chart is, this, it, it's, it's the same as the 70 mile an hour run, in other words. There's no real difference. We got that 10 degree bump in temperature here on both runs, 79, 80 versus 90 and 82 versus 92. So we're not really picking up any heat any anywhere between the uh, air cleaner and the turbocharger. In other words, from the manifold, the exhaust manifold, like I, like I was afraid we may be. I, at least I wanted to look at that. And as far as CFM, well, you can see our boost isn't affected, 7.2 versus 7.2. And the CFM, same thing. A little bit of difference here, not much. The CFM is actually higher without the foam. But for now, I'm running my truck without the foam. It's five years old. The foam looks okay, but it does look a little flaky where that discoloration is. And a lot of folks, uh, I heard some folks mention about the discoloration possibly being from oil mist that's coming from your crankcase ventilator. But if you notice on just about every picture you see of that foam, they all have that same little discoloration. But it's on the top side, on the air cleaner side. So if that was coming from the crankcase, and I don't think that's oil, if that was coming from the crankcase ventilator, it'd be coming from the bottom. But you can put your hand in there and it's just as dry as can be. There's no oil backing up from there. That's about it, guys. I can't, uh, I can't see where this is hurting us at all, taking that foam out. I will, uh, at some point, I'd like to get an aftermarket duck that doesn't have that, that big you know, assembly and that duck bill on it and test it against that baffle, that stock baffle, and see what that looks like. And I'll probably do that. But uh, it does it does make more noise, and we'll see on a long camping trip if it gets to where it's irritating me. But I really can't tell a difference on a straightaway. I usually notice it when I'm accelerating. You can hear the turbo spin up a little bit. It sounds kind of cool, actually. But we'll see. Anyway, I appreciate y'all putting up with my rant here. And uh, if you like the video, click like. I don't know why I say that. It seems like most of the other YouTubers say that. So maybe it's helping. I don't know. If you don't like it, click you don't like. Either way, I appreciate you guys hanging around. Till next time. Adios.